lesson that, that I am focusing on, defining, identifying, and representing ratios, fall within the second of a three-term academic year. There are things that are mandatory in creating a comfortable and inviting working environment from the onset. It is for this reason that there are guidelines on etiquette and resources needed to be able to function efficiently on the platform. At the beginning of the second term, the students are welcome back from their vacation. At the start of the lesson, are some self-directed activities aimed at strengthening those who are weak at the prerequisite skills and allowing others to brush up on their knowledge and skills. The activities cater to all learning styles. There is even kinesthetics in the completion of the survey. How many mathematics textbooks are there? Feedback will be provided via comments, annotated PDFs, and inline for all activities. For students to be substantively engaged, there are opportunities for individual and collective self-assessment. These provide opportunities for the students to share with each other and their teacher their thoughts and feelings about their learning at cognitive, affective, and operative levels, which will move students closer to engagement. Self-assessment through reflection can provide critical feedback to teachers about whether or not students are engaged. As such, for student self-assessment and reflection, the real framework is used within Gibbs' reflective cycle. Gibbs' cycle consists of six stages, description, feelings, evaluation, analysis, conclusion, and action plan. The real framework comprises the essential elements of reflection, engagement, and authentic learning. It becomes more powerful when the teacher and children are constantly involved in responding orally and in writing to a series of challenging, interesting, and lateral probes. In this lesson, there are many learning resources and some self-directed activities. Some of the resources mentioned here that haven't been previously mentioned are teacher-student exchange, learn to use Microsoft PowerPoint, and the 3 to one exit tickets. The self-directed activities are also listed to be seen. Re Reflective practice is so important for self-growth However, Hargreaves 2004 argues that forced self-examination can never be a positive learning tool, and Hobbes 2007 posits creating a forced reflective practice assignment that evokes genuine and uninhibited response is a difficult undertaking. It is because of this all reflective practices in this lesson are used in a supportive environment rather than for grading purposes. This is done in order to give individuals the opportunity to gain confidence and awareness in a non-threatening atmosphere, Hobbes 2007. First, the reflective practice is introduced slowly in the video Reflection in Learning, Uni Northampton 2014, in the self-directed activities. This video introduces students to the role of reflecting and learning. There are three reflect on this learning checkpoints in this video that encourages and supports the reflective practice. Unlike traditional journals, which only serve the instructor, blogs have the ability to engage a larger audience, forming a close-knit community of learners. The public media of blogs within the class encourages the students to view each other's work and respond with comments, hence promoting collaborative writing and reflection among students. Armstrong, Berry, and Lamshed, 2004. Audiovisual tools enable both students and teachers to monitor the progress of their work by giving them a greater awareness of the progress they are making. Recording reflections helped to develop students' skills in self-evaluation as they became more aware of the learning process. Lynn et al., 1999. Padlet is an online bulletin board in which a variety of post types may be added, 
creating a way for reflecting to become more collaborative. It provides a choice between eight different organizational types, which include random, timeline, stream, or shelf, and provides leverage to display learning processes in multiple formats, such as graphic, text, videos, animation, or audio, allowing students to create reflective Padlet walls, where many sources can be incorporated, has the potential to have them be more reflective through other means than reflective writing. The benefits, drawbacks, and challenges to using these learning resources are tabulated and can be thoroughly perused at a later time. The teaching approach is necessary to implement effectively these learning resources and my role in contributing to engaging students in reflective, reflexive practices are all one and the same. These approaches are ru and rules are listed for your viewing. Thank you for viewing and listening to my presentation. I hope it was informative.